The U.S. Supreme Court is on course for a history-making appointment. Sitting Justice Stephen Breyer announced his retirement today. That paves the way for U.S. President Joe Biden to fulfill an election pledge of appointing the first black woman to the high court. Today, Biden reiterated that commitment. Choosing someone to sit in the Supreme Court, I believe, is one of the most serious constitutional responsibility a president has. Our process is going to be rigorous. I will select a nominee worthy of Justice Breyer's legacy of excellence and decency. While I've been studying candidates' backgrounds and writings, I've made no decision except one. The person I will nominate will be someone with extraordinary qualifications, character, experience, and integrity. And that person will be the first black woman ever nominated to the United States Supreme Court. The CBC's Magda Gabrasalasa joins me from Washington with more on the changes coming to the U.S. Supreme Court. So, Magda, how historic will this next appointment be? Well, this is huge. It is history making. As you heard there, Biden said he is going to nominate a black woman, which is a first and a promise that he made uh, while he was running to be president. And of course, we know until now there have been two African-American uh, men that have sat on the Supreme Court, but this would be a first for a woman. Now, we've been talking about uh, this potential retirement for the last 24 hours. Now, of course, getting confirmation that after 28 years, Justice Breyer will retire at the end of his term. Now, just before the news conference, uh, a letter was released from Breyer announcing this. And in that letter, he said that he found his time with the Supreme Court to be challenging and meaningful. And he said his colleagues have been warm and friendly. And today, in front of the cameras, he really focused a lot on the future. He said he enjoys talking to students. He, ta he touched on democracy and said the country is engaged in a civil war. And he called on students to pick justice up, calling it an experiment that is still ongoing. Of course, we also heard from President Biden thanking Breyer for his years of service and praising him for his legal mind. Here's more. Today, Justice Breyer announces his intention to step down from active service after four decades, four decades on the federal bench and 28 years on the United States Supreme Court. His legacy includes his work as a leading scholar and jurist in administrative law, bringing his brilliance to bear to make government run more efficiently and effectively. It includes his stature as a beacon of wisdom on our Constitution and what it means. And through it all, Justice Breyer has worked tirelessly to give faith to the notion that the law exists to help the people. Now, the timing of this uh, retirement announcement is crucial. Uh, it means that, you know, what happened with Ruth Bader Ginsburg doesn't happen again here. And that, of course, uh, is when, you know, she, she had a chance to retire during Obama's time in office, and she didn't. And so when she passed away during uh, the time that Trump was president, it really allowed him to uh, move quickly to put a conservative pick in her place. So by Breyer uh, retiring right now or at the end of this term, he's really doing Biden a favor, all while the Democrats have a slight majority in the Senate with the vice president's tie breaking vote. And so, Magda, who are some of the contenders to replace him? So we've heard a, a few names throughout the day. Um, uh, about six or seven names have come up uh, that we've heard, including Judge Katwanji Brown Jackson. She's already been Biden's pick once before. Just last year, he chose her to go from being a judge at the federal district court to the U.S. Court of Appeals for D.C. So she's been through the Senate confirmation process before. And, and back in the day, she served as a Supreme Court clerk for Breyer. Another possibility is Justice Leandra Kruger with California's Supreme Court. She served as an acting deputy solicitor general during Obama's time in the office. And she, too, was a law clerk for the Supreme Court back in the day as well. So there's, those are some of the names that have been popping up. But as you heard today, uh, Biden isn't expected to make a, a final decision on a nominee until sometime late in February. Magda, thank you. The CBC's Magda Gabrasalasa in Washington.